Social media is integral to everything we do. We don't see it as a separate entity. So throughout all of our communications and campaigns, we use social as one of the channels. One of the key things about social media that we're learning is that we have to think completely differently from pushing a message out. That it's very much about creating a conversation. Um, but again, in a highly regulated environment like pharmaceuticals, there's only so far you can go with that. There's very strict guidelines on what we can and can't say to the general public. And uh, within those parameters, we can still bring a lot of stories to life. And that's really where we're going. We see now a, a lot more clients come to us saying, I need to be on social media. And the answer is probably yes, but to what degree? And make sure that you're there for the right reasons, not because you think you should be and make sure that you're using the right channels that are relevant for your audience segments and that you're talking to them in the right way. So the tone of voice and all of that sort of thing becomes increasingly important. We presently use LinkedIn and Twitter primarily for our social media. Um, and we also use Instagram as well, but we use Instagram in a different way. So we use Instagram to depict behind the scenes um, life at Cambridge Epigenetics. So it would give a bit of a flavour of what it's like to work for us. When we talk about social media, we tend to talk about platforms such as Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and so forth. But sometimes we don't think about uh, blogs, which are which can also be a very powerful tool for marketers. And um, some of our followers became very engaged with us through Twitter. We invited them to write articles on our own blog, uh, which, we, which actually went extremely well, got a lot of engagement. And we were delighted to be able to share those scientific experiences and, and tips and um, recommendations from customers to the wider community and give them a platform on our own blog. So with social media as a platform, there are many challenges. One is the regulatory requirements of our industry, so there are things that we cannot say. But on the other hand, we're wanting to engage in conversations. So we also need to look at it in a global perspective. So if we wanted to have a conversation globally around what science can do, um, there are things that we can put out there that really impact everybody. Um, but the lesson that I would say, the biggest lesson that we're learning right now is timing. So if I'm talking about a fantastic new piece of research which is, has a high amount of impact but to a very, very small amount of people, it's a rare disease or a neglected tropical disease. Now my expectation cannot be the same as if I'm talking about a story about a new cancer therapy. But in terms of the sheer numbers, they're not going to rack up, they're not going to be comparable. And again, it comes back to that. I need to serve those stories up to the right audience to deliver that impact. So then, you know, if I get, you know, if I get a million hits on a blog about cancer, but I only get 10,000 hits on a, on a, on a blog about um, a neglected tropical disease, is one a success and one a failure? I'd argue not. So for us, it was really focusing on where is the true value being derived from? As part of that, it's really understanding what our own key performance indicators or KPIs are. Sometimes it can be the clicks, the views you get, but fundamentally that's all a surrogate marker for the sales and traction you have and new conversations you have. You can have a, a very, very well planned social media campaign, but get it out at a time when the people you're trying to reach are just not thinking about that particular thing. So we tend to find um, moving towards hotspots of interests, whether it's around congresses or around big milestones, really works very well and brings the content to life because it's not about what you put out there, it's about how much people will engage with it. I think it's very difficult to put KPIs on communications. It's always been the case and in previous roles I've, I've had a similar sort of challenge and I think the difficulty if you, is if you put one of those KPIs such as, right, you need to do X number of press releases per week or per month, you get you, you open up that risk of people saying you know people people struggling to do a press release to hit the numbers rather than tell the story. So I think it's a much more sensible approach to think about the story first and ensure that you've got a powerful, strong story. And I think then it's about making sure that, that story aligns with the strategic need of the organisation. And I'd say also one thing about social media in the industry is that in highly regulated environments, it still feels a little bit scary, a little bit un unstable, and actually it's not at all. It's very much where you can create transparency and where you can create a certain openness and conversation. 
and the opportunity for that is great if you have the appetite to overcome some of the road bumps along the way. So when we use social media as an early stage technology company, we really very much focus on understanding as quickly as possible what is generating us meaningful conversations. And we try and do that through all new platforms we observe um, in the hope that we find that diamond in the rough that will be valuable as a company. I think it's really difficult to break through the cacophony right now. There's a lot of noise, we're bombarded with information. So I think you need to tailor your content, make it short, make it snappy, and be clear on what the message is and who you're trying to send it to.